In this video, we're going to be looking at a concept known as a constant current source. Um, I'm your host, Lewis Laughlin. This is something new to look at. It's a great way to control output voltages from power supplies or to supply light emitting diodes to keep them a constant brightness. These, of course, are high powered white 1 watt light emitting diodes. This is an LM317 voltage regulator. This meter is connected up to measure current. And let's see what we have here. Let's switch the power on and notice the meter. It's going to be about 124 milliamps or so. You can see it here in the... Uh, and those, boy, those LEDs will blind you looking at it here. Um, what this does, it has a formula. This is a 10 ohm resistor. You divide um, 1.2 by 10, and that will give you the current output. Okay, 1.2 volts divided by 10 is 124 milliamps. What if I needed a constant source for 50 milliamps? Um, if you, need, if you divide 1.2 by 0 0.05 and get the appropriate resistor. I'll do that real quick. You need a 24 ohm resistor. That's all there is to set your constant current source. Why would we want to do that? You notice I have two LEDs on here. Now, you know if you had just plain resistors connected back to a battery, if I jumpered one LED completely, what would happen to you? It would fry the other LED, wouldn't it? Well, guess what? It won't happen here. Voila! It's still 124 milliamps doesn't matter I can short the thing out in fact and it will still be hundred and twenty four milliamps constant current sources are used in a lot of things and you can do them with op amps you can do them with transistors or you can do them with an LM317 let's look at some circuits and explore this subject a little more in detail here is our basic circuit for the LM317. Um, it's going to be set up as a series pass current regulator. It's real easy to set your output current. It's done by a single resistor called R1. In the case of my demos, I used a 10 ohm resistor, which is what I happen to have. And your formula is 1.25 divided by R1. In this case, divide it by 10 is going to give me 125 milliamps. Your R1 can range from 0.8 ohms to 120 ohms. That's pretty well your limit on it. You can't go any higher and you can't go any lower. All right, in this circuit, I'm using the LM317 to supply a constant 125 milliamps. Again, based on 1.25 divided by R1, which is 10, and I'm powering three white, high-powered, light-emitting diodes. Each of the three in the series, of course, is dropping around 3.2 volts times 3. It's going to give me 3.6 volts. Uh, the important part about this is, once this is set up, the output current is only determined by R1, the 10 ohm resistor. Over here on VCC, I can crank the voltage around from 15 to 35 volts, and I do not change the current going to my three LEDs. It is fixed. The only time it might change is if I drop below, oh, 12, 13 volts trying to drive a 9.6 volt circuit. That would cause problems. All right, in this frame, I'm using an LM317 with a 50 ohm resistor for R1 as a 25 milliamp trickle charger 
for a 5 volt NICAD battery pack. Hey, these work real good for trickle charging all kinds of batteries. Um, you want to trickle charge batteries because they will last much longer than just uh, really dumping the current into them which tends to heat them up and warp the materials and cause and it's shortening the life of the battery. Like I said, all you got to do is once again divide 1.25 by 50 for the value for R1 and I got a 25 milliamp trickle charger for a NICAD battery pack. And so this completes this um, introduction to the LM317. It's got a lot of uses, be it a variable voltage regulator or as a higher powered um, constant current source. For the real small constant current sources, of course, I'll use the LM334. For the higher power constant current sources, I'll use an LM317. I uh, hope this was useful to you. Thanks for listening. Uh, we'll see if a video will follow this if it hasn't already preceded it. All right, illustrated in this slide, uh, I've dropped my input voltage VCC to 12 volts. It is no longer regulating. I'm measuring 50 milliamps when I had my live circuit, which you saw in a video. Um, the current dropped to 5 50 milliamps because the voltage in is too close to the output voltage for the load and in general VN should be the out should be greater than or probably equal to the voltage of the load plus about 5 volts to make sure you can get the proper current regulation that you seek all right, I took this circuit that I had before where I dropped VCC to 12 volts and I removed one of my LEDs. So now my load voltage is approximately 6.4 and the LM317 is properly regulating the current at 125 milliamps. An important thing to note, as long as you have a proper voltage in versus voltage out, is the load resistance has no effect on current. That is unless the resistance is so high at the given current that the uh, load voltage will approach v um, probably 90 percent of VCC. So as far as this goes over here your load resistance if kept within range has no effect on your current. Just as earlier a higher voltage on VCC also had no effect in, on the current. All right, in this frame, um, I have removed another LED. Now I only have one LED running at 3.2 volts, and yet my LM317 still continues to supply 125 milliamps. Again, proof once again that the output load if it's kept within specs does not change the current flow which is strictly based on 1.25 divided by R1. Now let's um, talk about what's going on with the LM317. Um, if you're putting in 12 volts and you're dropping 3.2 volts um, on the load at 120 milliamps well, guess what? You are dropping, oh, 12 minus 3.2, what is that, uh, 9 point, no, 8.8 .8 volts across the LM317 and 120 milliamps. It's going to get warm. So you're not making current magically disappear. You, you have a fixed current out here, but what voltage drop you have that isn't... Um, being dropped in the load is being dropped by U1 and the resistor as the current flows through the two. So be aware of that. Um, if you're going to be using one of these circuits um, and you're flowing a quarter amp and this 10 ohm resistor is a 1 8 watt, it won't hold up very long. So be aware of your wattage for R1 and be aware that if you're using a really high VCC to uh, current source a real low voltage, 
the LM317 is going to get hot. All right, in this frame, I'm using an LM317 with a 50 ohm resistor for R1 as a 25 milliamp trickle charger for a 5 volt NICAD battery pack. Hey, these work real good for trickle charging all kinds of batteries. Um, you want to trickle charge batteries because they will last much longer than just. Uh, really dumping the current into them, which tends to heat them up and warp the materials and cause, and it's shortening the life of the battery. Like I said, all you got to do is, once again, divide 1.25 by 50 for the value for R1, and I got a 25 milliamp trickle charger for a NICAD battery pack. And so this completes this um, introduction to the LM317. It's got a lot of uses, be it a variable voltage regulator or as a higher powered um, constant current source. For the real small constant current sources, of course, I'll use the LM334. For the higher power constant current sources, I'll use an LM317. I uh, hope this was useful to you. Thanks for listening. Uh, we'll see if a video will follow this if it hasn't already preceded it.